Hi everyone, it's Adam with Milo's Restoration. And today I've got a video for you on a mid-century modern dresser that I found. Um, if you're noticing anything different about the typical camera, I am using my phone. I'm shooting at 4K, uh, 60 FPS, which is kind of new to me, but um, I, I have a camera and for some reason something occurred with it the other day. I pulled the SD card out and I was making a video actually had two videos that I was working on and it ripped the whole SD card side out so yeah I'm getting that warranted right now but until then I'm trying to keep the videos coming with uh, my phone So I'm just sanding the old finish off here with 320 Cubitron and the Merca sander. It's a really, really thick veneer. You're not going to burn through one of these veneers. You don't have to worry about that. Um, you know, I didn't have to go below 320 and that's just, you know, the finish was just thin and it was kind of old and basically ready to come off. So it did. So even this edge banding that they use was very thick. I never typically would sand this with a power sander, but you know, I just really did not want to make a mess with paint stripper. Um, I have a lot of material, a lot of work pieces in my shop right now, and there's just no room for that. So I just sanded it down and used the corner sander on the tight areas, and I did not burn through the veneer one time. Okay, so this is just a little bit of citrus chip and a rattle can. I like to keep this. It's really convenient. Um, if you're going to keep anything and do furniture flipping and rattle cans in a shop like this, I would say BIN primer, a can of citrus strip, and a rattle can of spray paint. And basically, that's the only thing that I keep in aerosol form. Just a helpful tip to me anyway. So after that scotch bright um, that I used to take the citrus strip off, I'm going to use a, a little bit of lacquer thinner, clean it off. What was really strange about this finish was that it actually didn't respond to any solvents, really. So the only thing that would take it off was a citrus strip, which is kind of strange. Usually lacquer thinner just like burns an old finish like this away. And I don't think it's a conversion varnish because of the fact that I tried mineral spirits and some other things like that on it. And really, nothing would take it off. So, yeah, I don't know. So this is just a little bit of walnut wood filler. There's some really depressed dings right there in the corner that I just kind of filled up and then spread them, sanded them down. And it made it look better. I wasn't really trying to go after all these little nicks and dings there's just way too many of them i'd end up having to pull all the veneer off and redo it and this is where i did make a mistake i reached for some bondo wood filler and i thought it was just regular stainable bondo wood filler and it was not it was some other kind of uh like plastic wood or something that i had and it's not stainable not in the traditional way that 
wood is or regular wood filler is anyway so when that dried up i sanded it down and then i put a little bit of this dark walnut wood filler over it i still didn't like it but at the same time i was probably going to do a little bit of adjusting with some stain pins and markers and stuff like that at the end also the pendant hardware we're going to cover up the holes and i wasn't too worried about it So if you sand it down to bare wood like I have, um, you could still see little finished spots in those corners right there. That's okay. I'm just raising the grain. So I just take a wet cloth. I rinse it out every now and then to make sure I'm not spreading contaminants around. And I just wipe it down. I just give everything a, you know, decent amount of wetting. And then I'll sand, do my final sanding with 320 grit after that. And... That'll take care of the fact that whenever I go to put a water-based finish on top of this, which I will be using, it won't raise the grain and you won't get the kind of ugly grain raised look that you get sometimes. So I saw this uh, water-based wood stain that I've been using for a while now on another YouTube channel. I think it's called Fixing Furniture. And he recommended it, and I like it a lot, too. It It's like uh, you buy it off Amazon. It's pretty cheap, actually. And the thing that I like about it is that you can probably add about 50% water to this stain, and you still get a really good color. So this that really, really dark, kind of rich color that I'm getting here, that's probably cut 50% in half and the stain does go a pretty far amount uh, I mean you get a pretty good coverage with it but yeah it's really easy to work with it doesn't stink it doesn't smell bad you can adjust it with water as needed to get the color that you want and you can mix basically all their stains are kind of similar so I mean if you want to kind of mix colors you can you know add a little bit of white to it add a little bit of brown or a little bit of black or green or whatever color you need to get the right color and I like that a lot it's a lot easier to work with than most stains that I've used and it looks good on basically every wood that I've used so far which is really rare you know I find like the Minmax and Verathane stains they look as advertised well on certain woods but others they just don't look good on and I have found that this stain looks pretty good on every piece that I put it on so far so I'll probably continue using it you know it's a really good option for me water cleanup So I gave that overnight to dry, and then I got the sealer coat put on the next morning. And I'm just using Evo by Gemini. It's a water-based lacquer, but I actually really like this brand. And it always works really good. It's really expensive. It's like their premium line of water-based lacquers, but 
I haven't had any problems with it not getting hard. I, you know, probably one of the most frustrating things about lacquers is that their tendency to dry really quickly, and you're kind of in this, like, basically catch-22 where you try to turn the air pressure up to get better atomization, but at the same time, you're blowing overspray over pieces that you already have hit, and what ends up happening is you get dry spray, particularly on curved pieces, and I haven't really had this issue with this sealer. I found that polycrylic actually is kind of in the same boat. You don't really get that same problem that you do with other lacquers, and I think the kind of solution is is that oil-based lacquers just tend to be very fast drying and hard to atomize at the same time and so you don't get the kind of nice leveling like you do with water-based lacquers and I prefer in clears to use water-based lacquer I'll probably never use another solvent-based clear So I spent like an hour and a half last night looking for some replacement pendant hardware and I could not find any that really looked similar to what I was going for. And I was only missing one knob so it was really frustrating but I just decided to save those for another project. And I went and got some T-pools from Home Depot or actually Lowe's and I'm going to spray paint them gold. I cleaned them with acetone and basically what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to put them vertically. And that'll kind of give the effect of a bigger hardware. I, I put some knobs up next to it, but I just didn't really like the way that they look. They look way too small. It definitely needs some kind of pendant hardware. I just do a really light sanding in between the sealer and the top coat, really just to make it a little bit softer and smoother, get out any dust nibs or anything like that. And the top coat is a little bit thinner, but I still use the same needle size. Generally speaking, a 1.3 is sufficient. Um, a 3 or a 4 probably would be fine, but a 3 if you have it.
So with these T-handles, I wanted to place them vertically, and I think it added a good effect to the hardware. I like the way that it looked. And also, this was probably about after four or five coats of spray paint. And I put very, very light coats of spray paint on, and just it allows it to dry quickly. And then I just use a square to line them up at the drawer front to make them square. And uh, I use the hardware that came with it. And also, um, I try to use a glove to avoid putting fingerprints in the soft spray paint. Here's the finished dresser at the store, and thanks for watching.